Hey there, today we're going to be talking about Assessment Statement 2.1.6, which asks us to explain the importance of cell surface area to volume ratio. Um, so when we're talking about this concept, it's important to remember that at the base of this, we're really worried about the needs of the cell and the processes that occur within the cell. So the larger the cell, the more nutrients it will need, the more gases, the more waste it will produce, and the more metabolism will occur within that cell. Um, so before we discuss the specifics of surface area to volume, just to give you a concept to consider, um, if we talk about metabolism, that goes hand in hand with heat production. And this is a big concern for organisms. Um, the greater the metabolism, the greater the heat production. And heat is a type of waste product for a cell. So it needs to be able to escape from the cell in order for that organism to not overheat. And a really um, clear example of this is, in, is when we compare an elephant to a mouse. Um, so elephants are huge, um, on average about 11,000 pounds. They require 300 to 600 pounds of food per day, but they have a very low heart rate of only 28 beats per minute. And so what this tells us is that for their size, really, elephants have quite a slow metabolism and therefore less heat production. When we look in contrast at a mouse, um, they're very small, about 8 hundredths of a pound. They need about 12 or 0 0.012 pounds of food per day, and their heart rate is around 500 beats per minute. So this is pretty significant, and we can expect that they have a high heat output. Now, when we think about this, if an elephant had a heartbeat of 500 beats per minute, they would produce so much heat, and it would not be able to escape fast enough because of the huge mm -hmm. volume of their bodies that the elephant would die very quickly. Um, so heat release is one of our concerns when we discuss mm -hmm. surface area to volume ratio. Um, so before, again, before we talk about um, specifics of an individual cell, let's look at how to calculate surface area to volume ratio. This will be important in the lab that's coming up and possibly on an exam question. I'm going to give you two styles of calculating, um, or I'm sorry, three styles of calculating surface area and volume ratio. So we're going to look at a cube, a rectangular prism, a, and a sphere. And so when we calculate surface area, um, we're going to be looking at first the cube, which is six times the length of a side squared. For a rectangular prism, you're going to take two times side A, times side B, plus 2 times side B, times side C, plus 2 times times A, times C. And then a sphere, um, the calculation for that is 4 pi times the radius squared. And you'll notice that when we look at the surface area calculations, they're all squared values. Okay, so surface area is a squared value. Now let's look at volume. For a cube, you take a, so the length of one side cubed. For a rectangular prism, you're going to take side A times side B times side C. And for a sphere, you're going to take um, 4 thirds pi radius cubed. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice for volume, it is a cubed value. So when we think about the increase of these two, we see that surface area is going to increase at a squared value rate, where volume is going to increase at a cubed value rate. So we see that as size increases, volume is going to increase faster than surface area. We'll discuss the importance of the squared and cubed values in just a moment, but first I'd like you to do some practice calculations. So I want you to calculate the surface area to volume ratio for three cubic cells with sides of 1, 4, and 6 millimeters. Um, so please pause the video and do those sample calculations and also be sure to simplify. You simplify similar to a fraction. So for example, if you have a 2 to 4 surface area to volume ratio, you could simplify that to 1 to 2. So pause the video and do that. 
When you return to class, we'll go over the answers to these calculations, so please have those ready. And now let's talk about the importance of this ratio. Here's a diagram that I think sums it up pretty well. Um, so as it says, as the cell grows, the cytoplasm has less access to the surface for gas exchange, supply of nutrients, and loss of waste, um, and anything else that the cell may need. And this diagram shows that as the cell grows, um, the nucleus has less and less access. So items have to travel much further to supply the entire cell. Um, and like we said before, as cells grow, the volume increases as a, at a greater rate than the surface area. And remember, volume is the area being supplied here. It's the inside of the cell, where surface area is the access point for all of these supplies. So the fact that surface area does not increase as quickly hinders the amount of nutrients that can enter, the amount of waste that can leave, and so cells have to make some accommodations to take care of this. And this means that there is a maximum size for a cell. Um, so I want you to brainstorm a couple ideas of what a cell might do to increase this surface area to volume ratio, how it might um, allow for this increase in size to occur. And we'll talk about your brainstorm in class. Thanks.